Oh, good afternoon. If you're in America, good evening. If you're in Liberia, welcome to this um, podcast. Please help me to share the video. I am not going to be here long. It is going to be brief. And uh, help me to share the video, folks. <clears throat> uh, I have a few things I want to talk about uh, with you. Um, this um, afternoon. What's up, my brother? Seth Gibson? Said you have disappeared, man. I haven't seen you in a long time, my friend. I trust you and the family are doing good. Um, folks, I am having a very lovely afternoon here in Delaware. It's beautiful, it's sunny. Um, thank you, Amy. Amy, she likes the haircut. <laughs> it's a Liberian brother who cut my hair this time around. Uh, his name is Samuel and he works at uh, Marty Barbershop. He's in Philadelphia, Woodland. He's a, he's a great barber. I like the cut too. He's a great barber. Amy, thank you. Uh, so yeah, share the video, folks. I've got a few things I want to talk about quickly. Uh, my brother, Emmanuel Degula, I hope you're feeling much better. Um, Clara Mala, what's up, sis? Eddie Miller, my, I'm going to be at, so, uh, we will be making our official declaration soon, uh, for the Senate seat of Montserrat County. Yes, we're going to be, uh, I'm, I'm on a lot of pressure. You know, it's, it's, it's a blessing. You know, uh, many times it's the politicians who are begging the people to support them, but to see the people pushing you for this, pushing you for this is a, is an incredible, incredible blessing. And so the people have been pushing me. Oh, Costa, you got to announce. You got to run for the Senate. You must run for the Senate. And and I, I must say I'm very grateful because you all know uh, it's, it's always the other way around. It is the politicians who are begging the people to support them. But in my case, the people are begging me to run. And I say that with utmost humility. Pittman Kennedy, my friend, how are you doing? Pittman, I hope you're doing good. Um, I am doing fantastic. I'm having some watermelon. It's, it's all helping. I, I think uh, you all can tell my voice is pretty much coming back to itself. Mm -hmm. This watermelon is amazing. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Tastes yummy. Very good. Fantastic. When, when we reach a thousand, then I'll begin to talk. You all know the tradition. Share the video. We hit a thousand. I got four talking points. We're going to hit bam, 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 bam. Then we gone. Mm -mm. Well, in the meantime, I'm juicing myself up. Mm -mm. So, I wanted to shout out uh, to all the people who celebrate today, celebrate your birthday today. I wanted to shout out to you, Mr. Ebenezer Pratt, Sweat Equity, my friend, Bedman. Um, Mr. Ebenezer Pratt, happy birthday to you. You celebrate your birthday today. I wish you all the best. My beloved sister, Lindsay Brooks. She's next to me. Uh, she's my mother, our late mother's second child. Lindsay celebrates her birthday tomorrow. Uh, she's also a Leo, August the 10th. Uh, my sister, I want to say happy pre-birthday to you, love. I love you to the moon and back. And to everyone who celebrates today, uh, Big Brother Charles Meyer, I want to know whether you're still, are you back in the States or are you still in like in Liberia? Now, don't think I don't be reading the comments, so I can't possibly read them all, but I see as many of them as possible. Mm. Mm. This watermelon is good. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, yummy, yummy. We, we're just over a thousand. Yeah, we take it to a thousand views and I will start talking. One thousand views. I've got four things I want to talk about here. Um, and then we're done. Four, four items. Very important. Um, uh, four items, very key items, you know, um, <laughs> yep, four items and I'm going to be, I'm going to be done. So let's just reach a thousand. That's the, um, 
I'm sorry this morning uh, we didn't do the show, but um, you bet tomorrow morning we're going to be on and we're going to keep fighting, you know, doing what we love to do. We're almost at a thousand. It's kind of slow today. Some some days are slow, but we're almost there. I'm tantalizing appetite. Sorry, well, you know, you know, beat bull. <laughs> tantalizing appetite. Uh, all right, folks. So we're gonna we're gonna do this. Four things I want to talk about here. We're just at a thousand people. Number one. Yet another LRA employee has gone missing. Yet another LRA employee has gone missing. And as much as we want to remain optimistic about Sam Moore, the LRA employee that's gone missing, but a full grown man, fully physically capable man, no handicap whatsoever, a round time Monrovia ball to just get up and go missing. And he cannot be heard from for days and days and days. I mean, uh, you got to start thinking worst case scenario. Yes, yeah, possible. Anything is terrible. Anything is possible. At this point, you're thinking, ah, I hope this young man has not been murdered or something like that. Now, as I, as I said, we want to remain positive, but where in that small Monrovia would say a more go? And be missing. Where would he go and be and be missing? Where, where 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 could he possibly be that no one will hear from him? Uh, he's, he's not picking his phone. Uh, nothing, folks. You tell me. Where do you think this able-bodied young man would just get up and go, and no one would find him? I don't know. Uh, we're friends on Facebook. I'm going to speak of him as though he is still alive because that's what we wish. We wish that he is still alive. But we are also fearing that he also might not be. I mean, what is it with the LRA and their workers? We had uh, Albert Peters and Gifty Lama, two brilliant, well-placed LRA staffers, found dead. Went missing, found dead. Then we had uh, George Van Buto, an auditor at LRA, gone missing, found dead, head split open, just like that. Now we have Sam Mo, another LRA employee, gone missing for days. Nobody can hear from him. He's not picking his calls. Nothing. Where could Sam Mo be? Where could he be? That's the one million dollar question. LRA has become a notorious place in government for people to work. I mean, for people going missing and, uh, you know, washing up dead at some point. It's scary. It's extremely scary. You know? And and we wish the family, uh, we're in prayer with you. We, we wish that your son will be found, but... We are not so very optimistic considering the reputation the LRA has earned for itself in the last uh, year. It's a place where auditors go missing and they're found dead. And so, you know, it's sad, eh? It's very sad. That family, that, the Moore family, they're grieving right now. They're grieving. As would any family uh, that would just experience a member of their family to just Go to work on a normal day and go missing. Now, I'll tell you this. This is what I've heard. So according to the story, Sam Moore went to work. And after work, they said in the evening, he said he was going to deliver a document to one of his bosses on the Duport Road. But now the family people, the workers are saying that he has no boss that lives on the Duport Road. Well, maybe the boss, whoever it is, he was going to deliver this document to. Uh, maybe this person doesn't live there. Maybe the person simply wanted him to go there. We don't even know. It's very scary. People who work at LRA, you are apparently an endangered species. 
In, 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 do you know what they mean by when you are classified as an endangered species? That means uh, you are uh, going extinct. You know, you're dying out. In this case, they're not dying out. They're not simply falling out and dying. They're being murdered off or murder. That's what's happening at the LRA. People, they, uh, they have become an endangered species. It's the one place in government where, you know, you need to be careful when you work there. So that's the issue of the LRA. So we're very concerned about the CMO issue. We want to know what's happening. Uh, who did he go to meet and all that kind of stuff. And of course, it took days before the LNP finally issued a statement today to say that they're investigating uh, the disappearance of Sam Moore and, and for the time being, they're considering it a missing person case. It's a missing person's case? Are you kidding? For the time being, this guy's been missing for a long time. And, and, and you want to call it that at this point? It's crazy. It doesn't make sense. Now, something else I want to talk about here, folks. The EFFL. The Economic Freedom Fighters of Liberia, as they call themselves. I know a lot of the guys in the EFFL. They're in the news. They have not been in the news for a long time, but now they are in the news. Every politician or civil society activist, uh, everybody wants to be in the news. Because being in the news means you're relevant, right? The, e the EFFL, I, I hadn't heard anything from them in a long time. About two weeks ago, I saw uh, them put on a quite dramatic uh, demonstration about four guys bright and early in the morning, what seemed like around 7 a.m. or 6 a.m., showed up at the Capitol building on Capitol Hill with a lock and a chain. And they, they wrestled with the um, two or three Security guards that were there, and they chained the Capitol building uh, a gate, and they locked it, and left. There was a scuffle, but of course, four EFFL guys to three uh, or two Capitol police guards. So they succeeded against them. They chained the big gate, and then they left. The video went viral. You all were watching it. It was quite dramatic. That's all they did. They didn't break the gate. They didn't beat the men. They didn't do anything like that. They just chained it and they left. And to think that the government, and of course they came, they eventually, they must have hacksaw, they chained uh, or they locked and they, gave, they, they, got, they, they, they managed to take over the place, the, the capital building folks. And that was all. These guys did not vandalize anything. They did not break anything. They did not do anything like that. At least not anything that I saw in the video. So what happens next? The, the uh, Capitol building folks decide to go to court. They went and got a writ of arrest from the Monroe River City Court for the, they call them the CIC. The CIC of the uh, EFFL, Emmanuel Gonkwe. They issue an arrest warrant for Gonkwe and a number of his um, lieutenants. So today, Gonkwe and his people showed up at the Monroe River City Court with his lawyers, the COP lawyer, by the way, uh, Councillor Phile Kanga. But I'm not saying Phile Kanga was representing him in his capacity as. COP uh, as a COP lawyer, no. But Felix Angel was also his legal representation. So they showed up there at the Capitol building, I mean at the uh, Mon River City Court today. By the time they showed up, uh, of course, Ganga was, um, they didn't let them go. They uh, arrested him and took them to the Mon River Central Prison uh, on remand. They brought charges against them, criminal charges, obviously. Uh, Gongwe and his men are currently behind bars at the Mon River Central Prison where they are expected to spend the night and who knows how many other nights they will spend there. Now, but the COP has issued a statement, has drafted a statement which we are issuing 
And I'm going to read a statement for you while I'm on here. Uh, the statement reads, Council of Petrius, August 9, uh, 2021, for immediate release. The Council of Petrius is appalled by the arbitrary arrest and detention of members of the Economic Freedom Fighters of Liberia, EFFL, including its chairman or CIC, Emmanuel Gonkwe. The arrest and detention of these civil society players, especially by a government that has shown little or no seriousness to fight corruption and lead an economically viable country, is not only an abuse of power, but goes further to validate the many accusations against this government, which has been labeled kleptocratic. The action of the EFFL members to lock the main entrance of the Capitol building was a symbolic show sending a much more powerful message to our lawmakers who should be working in the interests of the people. At a time when hospitals are without essential drugs, schools without proper or no laboratories, science and computer, impassable roads, little access to electricity and water, etc., lawmakers agreed to budget and distribute 30,000 US dollars among themselves to spend at will. A citizen's action to express their abhorrence should not be met with intimidation in the form of arrest and detention. It is therefore the position of the COP that the Liberian government with immediate effect releases the detained members of the EFFL. Failure on the part of government will meet will leave us with no options but to begin a series of non-violent civil and political actions to ensure they are released. This government should be worried about its solid, that means it's a terrible image, international reputation and the many indictments of corruption, mysterious deaths and disappearance of citizens, harsh economic conditions of the citizens and the loss of dignity thereof, rather than intimidating men and women of courage who choose to stand with the suffering masses against their own government. Signed, Henry P. Costa, National Chairman, Council of Patriots. Now that is a statement the COP put out today, uh, you know, to condemn the arrest of Gunkwe and his team members, and to also demand their immediate release from detention. Now, having said that, it is sad. Now, Gonkwe worked with the COP from the beginning. When we formed the COP, Gonkwe came on board with his EFFL and they said they were interested in joining us to organize the protest. This is the June 7 pro protest. A few weeks, about two weeks into our collaboration, Gonkwe and his group shocked us and called a press conference and withdrew from the COP and labeled us all kinds of names in a press conference. So they did not even have the courtesy to inform us. And so when we wanted to release this press statement, there were some of our members who were concerned. Why should we uh, identify or fight for pe people who said all kinds of things about us? But we go to say that um, the COP is the largest, is the biggest advocacy group in the country. And our moral obligation and duty is to stand and fight for people's rights, whoever those people might be, whether they are supporters or whether they are enemies of ours or detractors of ours. It is a moral and binding responsibility and duty to do that. So the COP is simply uh, because I, I know many of our members would be concerned. Why are we issuing a statement in favor of Gunkwe and his people? We're doing this because it's our duty. It's what we should do. And and, and we will try to work with the, with the legal team and see what can be done. Uh, if we need to help to put up a bill bond, uh, to put up a bond for them to get released, uh, we, we will see what we can do. We, we will speak with our lawyers and see. 
Um, also, I want to move on to another thing here, folks. The Liberty Party. Uh, the Liberty Party. We are concerned. You know? We are very concerned about... Excuse me, folks. I'm blocking somebody. He's gone. He, he or she. The Liberty Party. The Liberty Party is a member of the CPP. Whatever affects the Liberty Party con concomitantly affects the, C the CPP. And we are all trying to promote the CPP. Especially, currently, the Liberty Party cheers the CPP. For us to have a situation where the Liberty Party has their dirty leaning being washed out in the public. We've seen press release. We've seen letters in, in, in internal memos and communications uh, out in the public. is very disturbing. Very disturbing. And I want to use this opportunity to call on the leadership of the Liberty Party to put their house in order. Your attitude is embarrassing. And some of you may not know, so I need to enlighten you. We have a situation where Young Likanga Lawrence, the political leader of the Liberty Party, and Musa Billete, or Paul Billy, Billete, as he calls himself, they are locked in a talk of war. Musa Billete is accused of having necodemously made changes to the constitution of the party giving himself more powers than he should have. And as a result of that, reducing the powers of the political leader of the party. We've all been talking about this in our various chat rooms, the other members of the, CP, of the CPP. But I'm a political commentator and I'm an opinion leader. So I will not just restrict my sentiments to a chat room. I will bring my sentiments to the public. We have letters here in our possession. Letters. A letter from the political leader of the Liberty Party, Yom Likanga, to the National Elections Commission, asking the commission to furnish her office with the copy of the Constitution that Musa Belichi sent there. You see that? They, 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 they're going back and forth. This is not good. It is embarrassing. I mean, imagine a situation where the political leader and the chairman are fighting and the chairman is accusing, the, the, the chairman is saying that, yes, the, the committee was set up to revise the constitution, but then the political leader is saying she does not know about those changes that were made and now they got to go to the neck. You see, now they've gotten the National Elections Commission involved Asking that to let us see copy of the constitution. Folks, you think this is good? Now we go on to the elections commission. A judge, we are a, 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 a judge, we are leaning elections commission. We're going there now to start asking the commission uh, to inter to, to, to get involved in our internal party matters because we can't get a, get along. You know, the political leader and the chairman can't get along and they're, and somebody changing the constitution, they're altering the constitution to give them more powers, to undermine the other person for whatever reasons. Huh? Huh? Only God knows. It's embarrassing. This is embarrassing. Now, some of you may not know about this. Some, some of you, the general public. Now, let me ask you, how many of you yet know about this? I got 1,500 people watching. How many of you watching knows about this? Who all know? Who yet knows about this? It's embarrassing. It's in the public now that Musa Belete and Yomli are fighting. It is not good. I'm calling on the Liberty Party leadership in this public manner because this thing is already in the public. That's why I'm talking about it. It's in the public domain. I'm calling on Yumbly, my sister, 
Mr. Musa Pelete, Senator Tyrus Delon, you all need to go in-house and fix this mess. It is terribly embarrassing. And the reason why people like Henry Costa, like the reason why I have the authority to speak to this publicly is because we are the ones speaking for the CPP every day. And to see something as embarrassing as this, we're not going to sit down and shut our mouths. And you know what I mean to, for the, to see the chairman of the party and the political leader fighting in the public and they not get election commission involved? My people, you see that kind of thing that election commission now is involved in our internal CPP matter because Yumbly and Delon, they can't go ahead again. They get on and say, I mean, I mean, Yumbly and Musa Bilet, they can't, they're fighting. They say, Musa Bilet, they say, oh, they all are all in the constitution. Then Yumbly say, they want to, they want to in the constitution. My people, this is embarrassing. Y'all better handle their issue. Musa Bilet is saying that a convention was called sometime in January. That's what Musa Bele is saying. You know? That the convention was called. Now, Yumbly is a political leader. She is saying, I don't know about certain changes to the constitution. From Yumbly's letter I read, she's only asking the neck to give her the constitution that Musa Bele submitted to the National Elections Commission. Because Yumbly wants to look at what he submitted. Then Musa Bele is saying that, and these, they're all documented, folks. I'm not telling you, they say, I have these letters, these, these exchanges. Musa Bele claims that the convention that was held, they made changes to the constitution. Yumbly is saying, yes, I know about a mini convention, but I don't know about the specific change. So, I mean, all kind of, man, look, they think they're embarrassing. We have good friends in the Liberty Party. We are allies. I respect them. I respect the legacy of the late Charles Bromsky. Y'all don't do Charles Bromsky party like this. I beg you. Y'all don't do Charles Bromsky party like, like this. Hey man, this is the way y'all own a Charles Bromsky memory, man. Y'all bring the Liberty Party to public distribute in the public. Y'all fighting over constitution. The bottom line here is the changes that were supposedly made gave Musa ability more powers than he originally had. And oh yeah. The changes that were supposedly made gave Musa ability more powers than he originally had. Now that's where Yomli has a problem. Should she have a problem? Of course she should. Why? Because she is a political leader of the party. She didn't know. Now she's asking neck. Please let me see the constitution Musa ability sent to you. So I can compare it with the or with the approved constitution that we have, or the current constitution. This is embarrassing. Though. It is embarrassing for people like us, we who talk for the CPP. Eh? It is embarrassing. So I'm calling on y'all, y'all please fix this matter. Y'all start writing letter back and forth. I mean, what are they writing letter? To see Musa Bilete writing Yumbly letter. My people, please tell me. Uh, no, parties can write memos, right? They can do memo. The chairman could do a memo to the standard bearer or the political leader on certain issues that they want to document. They want to have a trail. It makes sense, right? But to see that when you see now people who work together in the same institution start writing each other official letters instead of calling, picking on the phone or going to Yumbly Hall and say, Yumbly, what's going on? What is it? So, 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 so. But they read the letter. It's embarrassing, man. It's embarrassing. When the people start writing letter, it just shows you how bad their relationship has become. Y'all go back to status quo ante, as Stephen Johnson said. Y'all go back. Y'all just go back. Liberty the party is a beautiful party. Uh, Charles Bromsky's legacy, legacy of the rule of law, respect for the rule of rule of rule of rule of law. Y'all cannot mess this party up. And y'all start writing each other letter. Yumbly and, and Musa Bede, y'all need them writing letter, Bede. That high is leaking to the public. The writing letter is what has exposed this whole fight. Y'all writing letter. <laughs> you know? Y'all should stop it. Let me eat some of my watermelon. This is embarrassing. And I say this with genuine and sincere 
concern. It doesn't look good. It only fair was the CDPC. Liberty Party, by numbers, is the second largest party in the CPP. Second largest. Liberty Party is not small potato. It is the third largest political party in the country, consistently, in several elections. So, you take your trouble out of the public. You call another retreat. You go to, you go to Basa. You face it. Mm. Mm. Musa Bele, Yomli, Yako, eat some watermelon. You cool your chest. <laughs> you face it to you, man. Ah, you ain't married, huh? Before anybody can ask me, Costa. Because anything happen in the country, they can ask me, Costa, what is there, but I don't want it. Costa, what is there, but I don't want it. Before you ask me, let me tell you right now where I stand. Where I stand is, it's embarrassing. You're taking out of the public, you'll go fix it. I know they will fix it. They are all intelligent in the Liberty Party, got sharp, sharp people there. They will fix it. You're smart, smart people. Hmm. What up, man? Super. Okay, I'll take the last bite. Mm. And I'll drink a little. And I'll drink a little bit of water. Okay, I'm back here with you. So for now, I just wanted to offer a word of caution that that, that the internal party matter. But I got fish to fry in it. All of all who support CPP got fish to fry in it. Because we all want all the parties to have um, unity and, and and serenity and harmony within their ranks. The last thing we want is to have them fighting. It's bad for us. It's not good. The other thing I want to talk about before I end this video, and I'll be ending the video soon. One last thing I want to talk about is that, uh, okay, okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> well, I have been assured that they will fix their issue. You know, they're, you know, they're, yeah, I, I will not tell you the names of the people, but they're reaching out to me. They say they will fix it. But we, we respect the Liberty Party. It's, it's, Liberty Party is extremely important to the CPP. Trouble in there? Mm -mm. Not, not good for us. Nobody might be happy for you. It's not good for us. After the United Party in CPP, the Liberty Party. Before you come to commies. <clears throat> so we ain't want no trouble. And they've been around much, much longer. Before we formed ANC in 2012, Liberty Party had already been around. So we don't want that. Anyway, let me move on to something else. They said it will fix their issue. So I will leave that. Now, so I want to move on to another thing here. Do you all remember some months back? No, about a year ago. More than a year ago. More than a year ago. A resolution was going around in the House of Representatives. This resolution was for the establishment of a war and economic crimes court. About 56 representatives in the House of Representatives affixed their signatures to the resolution. The resolution then made its way to the Speaker's office. It was supposed to come from the speaker's office to go to, I think, to plenary. The resolution, the speaker now is supposed to take it out of plenary, I think, and bring it something. But it went to Buffer Chambers, the resolution. I have a copy of the original resolution here. I have it. 
with every single one of the 56 signatures. 56 representatives, that's more than two thirds of the, um, when I say, uh, somebody trying to correct me, they say not the ANC. Uh, my brother, you may not know, I was the founding, the organizing vice chair for political affairs of the ANC before it was called ANC. In fact, we coined the name, we give it a name, and I can tell you what, where we took the alternative from. We took the, uh, the, the alternative because we said we wanted to be different. And we took the National Congress after the ANC of South Africa. I was a first spokesman for the group that said we're going to form the a political party in 2012. Henry Costa, the records are there. That's one. I was the first vice chair for political affairs of the ANC, the organizing vice chair for political affairs of the ANC. I was also the co-chair on the Constitution Review Committee. After the Constitution was drafted, we formed a committee that I, I was the co-chair of. If you take a copy of the ANC's Constitution today, you will see my name in their Constitution, Henry Pedro Costa, Vice Chair for Political Affairs. So I was a founding member of the ANC. I was the first spokesman of the ANC before it was even the ANC. And uh, the idea of forming a political party was something that, uh, so, so just leave that. I was never, I never played any of that role in the ALP. The ALP, I am just a flow, a flow member. I had, I played no such role in forming the ALP of which I am a member. But the ANC, if you look at the back page, the last page of the ANC's constitution, you will see my name, co-chair constitution review committee. And uh, so, y'all who are in the ANC, I'm like, yeah, we form it. That my money we use, that all of our money we use to collect money, that how we register that party, my sweat, my money, my time, that how we form ANC. They change our constitution. In our constitution, is it going to be better talking about? It? We agreed. We, the original founders of the party, we agreed that we were not going to have a political leader until election year. We put that in the ANC's constitution. And what informed and inspired that decision, that philosophy, was that political leaders have a tendency to take over political parties and act as though the party belongs to them. So we said no. We're going to put in our constitution that our party will generate dues and money among ourselves and we'll run our own party. We will not have anybody come and take over our party until there is election year. But of course, after I left, I resigned. They changed the constitution and they did all kinds of things with it. And today that's how Ellis Cummings is there, which I have no problem with. Mr. Cummings has brought a lot to the ANC. So fine. But I was there. We formed it. So that, that brother just asked a question and I wanted to answer him. The ANT is the only political party, the first political party I ever joined. I didn't join it. We created it. I never joined the CEC. I went there with Winston Tubman, but I never joined it. The ANC, we created the ANC. The ALP, I never, uh, I, I never, um, played a key role in forming it. I became a member after it was formed. Okay. So back to what I was saying so I can finish this video. 56 representatives. 56 representatives affixed their signatures to a resolution supporting the call for the establishment of a war on economic crimes court for Liberia. They submitted the resolution above for Chimas. With a, with a report or something. They kept waiting for Chimbas to bring it forward for them to discuss it or take it up to plain air or something like that. It stayed in Buffer Chimbas' office for over six months. They go back to Buffer Chimbas asking where the hell the, uh, why wasn't he bringing the thing forward? But, but Buffer Chimbas said the resolution went missing. 
Can folks, I'm not giving you DC. One of the key players involved in, in this called me over the weekend and gave me the whole story. He is, he is a representative. He is extremely disappointed. And um, understandably. So he called me and said, my man, this is what happened. Buffett Chimas is telling the people that the resolution that 56 representatives affixed the signature to, their signatures to, suddenly vanished. Abracadabra, vanished. Now, then he told them, of course, they have copies. But Buffett Chimas said the one they're giving, it disappeared. So he told them to go back. Listen to this one. Papa Tima said, y'all go back. Y'all redo the resolution and regather the signatures. Imagine that. In Liberia, in that legislature that is as corrupt as we all know it to be. You tell people, say, go back and go get people to sign something. Again, with all this money that goes around all the time. The people went back. They drafted a resolution. Well, they took the same resolution again. They had to go back to get the sickness signatures. When this lawmaker spoke with me on Friday, he said to me, of the original 56 that had signed the first resolution, they have now managed to gather uh, 46 signatures. 46 of the original 56. So 10 of them outstanding have not signed yet. So they need an additional six signatures to cross the two thirds threshold. Six more signatures to go. That was as of Friday. How can a resolution signed by 56 lawmakers without any financial inducement because nobody bribed them to sign that one. Who's giving money for a war crimes code in Liberia? Nobody. Go to the office of the speaker. And is lying there in the speaker's office for six months. The speaker refuses to bring it on the floor or to send it to play. And then suddenly it disappears. And then he tells them, go get a new one. Because he thought that gathering the signatures would be difficult. They were hearing that Ava Jones, Representative Ava Jones, is going around from lawmaker to lawmaker, telling them that he has secured some funds from the executive to bribe lawmakers to not sign that resolution. Imagine that, folks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ava Jones. Yeah. When Ava Jones was running for representative, I remember I met him. I met, he came, he asked to meet with me. Uh, he was, uh, I saw something, I thought I saw something in this young man. He's a very young man. Uh, he came, we had a meeting at um, Fusion, lunch, we had we had lunch. And uh, he told me what he was doing. He was a money changer, a small businessman. And he told me all his plans, why he was running for representative. And, uh, but all these guys, you don't recognize them anymore after they get elected. After they get elected, they're gone. You don't recognize, I don't recognize Ava, Ava Jones anymore. So Ava Jones is the one representative from Magibi, uh, who is going around giving people money or offering to give people money so that they don't sign the resolution, folks. So if you were ever wondering whatever happened to the resolution that 56 or a number of representatives that fixed the signatures to, it went missing, according to Buffett Chambers. It disappeared. And they've now managed to gather 46 signatures, outstanding six. Once they get those six and they add them to the 46, then they will be over the two thirds threshold. And then they will send it back to the um, to committee room, and then which is the, the the committee on claims and petition, which is chaired by Representative uh, Rosalind Dennis, and then it's going to go to the um, then it's going to go to the um, Fatima Fambule. 
I will answer your question. You keep badgering me with this, your question. Um, yeah. So we hope that they will get the remaining six signatures so that they can cross the two-thirds uh, threshold and get it to a committee room. I, I hope Buffett Thomas does not say this time around his office caught fire and, and, the, and the resolution got burned. I hope he doesn't say that. Or that he mistakenly flushed it in the toilet for he used it for tissue. I hope he doesn't say that. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just being cynical, of course. That damn idiot deserves that. Maybe he will clean your butt with a damn paper, with a hard paper. Stupid man. Notice these people make you talk to them like that. And they be like, Costa is so disrespectful. He doesn't respect people. How can I respect a son of my son like that? Eh? 56 people, lawmakers sign a resolution. They send it to your office. And then you say, it disappear. All the other document in, it ain't disappear. All the black deed document in your office, and I disappear. But the document for, 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 for this kind of good thing that it won't get disappear from that son of mine, that dead son of mine, you know why I call him Bobo Timba? Many days, the idiot when Ellen was, um, was president, they guys would be passing around from one show to another show. And they guys would be a regular caller into the Costa show. They ain't here today. All the dirty, dirty, nasty, corrupt DNA he inside. Dirty fool, buffer Timur. Can't talk about the resolution disappear from your office. Anyway, Fatima, to answer your question before I end this podcast, because I have to go. You're asking me a question. I don't even want to mention the person you're asking me about. But anyway, I will, I will, I will, I will not call the person's name. But I will answer your question. You're asking me why I can't work with a certain person. Then you don't know. I used to work with that certain person. That certain person that you asked me about, I used to give them free airtime on my show when they started with their advocacy for war crimes. Called free air airtime, free, absolutely free airtime. Not only that, I used to mobilize my people, and many of my people work with them today. You see here? There's one of their members. This Richard Bar Allen. He's a junior brother of mine. He, he knows. He's been working with that person you're talking about. In fact, it was through me, I think Richard even got to know about that ind individual and started working with them. He has a problem with them too. I think he left or something like that. So, Fatima, some people, many of our people, don't like working together with other people. They like to run one man show. They want they want glory. So imagine the other day I brought Alan White on the Costa show and we took the whole issue of the war crimes code to another level. And everybody was talking about it again. We like we we injected some life back into the debate for war crimes code. That individual you're talking about was posting on Facebook that we want to steal the glory from for war crime court. Fatima, how can you work with somebody who telling you say, I thought you should be happy that people at all who got the biggest platform talking inside the TF, bringing Alan where they're all on it. I thought you should be happy for it. The son of my deadest one you thought you asking me about was dead talking, say, they cost a man here. He won't can see our, our glory. He was not talking about war crime court before. Now he's not put a boy inside. He won't can tell our glory because he coming where now. Can you imagine that? Fatima, how you expect me to work with somebody like that? Eh? The men say the work right for below. The men say that a personal advocacy. When a man a part born in, they get a dirty ass. That particular advocacy, they say it for him. Nobody has my thought in work right for Billy. You talk inside China, you will say, Oh, you want to see my glory. The man went on Facebook. And said, I want to steal your glory for the war crime court. My, my people. That I can't name you, Fatima, can ask me why you can't wear with a person, why you can't wear with a person. The man said, I want to steal your glory. Look, some, some people won't be famous. Too bad. The man can go Facebook live and get 20 views, 30 views. Me again, that kind of lecture. Be, before I even open my mouth, 1,000 people can be here waiting for me. Before I even start talking. The men, some people get desperate, they won't be human. Look, God has made everything for everybody. Everything can be for everybody. Some people were born for certain things. That's why I don't envy nobody. I don't envy nobody. Some people, 
certain time that they are trying to shine. Is it limited? Is something say what you may about the long, right? You see why I, I can't be high on the long. Me and the long are issue. Why are issue? What talk about issue? But I tell you this. You know why? You will not see me jumping behind people and to be attacking the long all the kind of thing. The long will make mistakes, and the long will learn from his mistakes. Do you understand? And he will do better. But compared to all the other Sanama Swan eh, in that place there, eh, Delon is far better. You know one reason why you don't see me putting my mouth on Delon attacking him, doing it one, doing that one. Eh? Let me tell you why. Because some people just not happy that Delon there. Why they gotta be Delon? Why is Delon suddenly getting all this attention? That is seeing way so many. So me and me and Delon, we have a lot in common. Plenty of people not like where we are. Some of our own people that they not let. Does that mean that some of the people who criticize the law, they do it for good reasons? Of course, they do. Some people do it for good reasons, legitimate reasons. But you will not see me joining that pull the law down campaign. Pull the law down. You will not see me inside. Because some of them don't treat me the same way. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. They play one who reach there in the library society. Some people won't be there bar way, but they think here that I'm lucky Shango. You can't just go through the dice and then you get there. It gotta take a long time. They don't run for Senator 2009. They went to be in the market though. That was not a time. You understand? That the I lesson I turned into one. Everybody got their time. Me, I don't I don't be jealous of nobody. You shiny, you not shiny, I'm not jealous of you. Because my time will come. Some people don't want to see you popular, they won't be popular too. Oh, what kind of man is so? Or every, every day, costa, 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 costa. They can't be happy, they be first. I don't operate like that. I don't operate like that. Dara Dillon, Dillon suffer before he got to the brink. Eh? He fed up, he got up, he made mistake, he did it, he did today. Comparing to the plenty of other people that are there, he is doing very, very well. Dillon still enjoys my confidence. He made some mistakes. I publicly criticized him and I moved on. But I, I am proud of the work that he's doing. Just being able to have the courage to stand up and fight for us is a good thing. Some people say, why he had to accept the balance of all of 15,000? The man gave, they find money, the people ref refuse the money. The man will go take the money again and give it again so they will do what they My boy, you please tell me now. The four money the man gave it to the monster rather health team. See, you could buy thin air, you help with the COVID treatment. They say, when I want the money, get the damn money back. Okay, then you get that. They don't ask what the money. You leave that money there that that I about change, then we eat that damn money. My sister, you only left her own money there. She said, I'm going to take it and use it. You only, you show that money you left there. They fight 15,000 Yomli told you know what Yomli did? Hey? There was a school they were building in Grand Bazaar. They didn't finish building that school. They needed money to finish the school. I've seen the school picture. I'll probably post the picture so y'all can see. And you know what? Hey, yeah. Because Yomli it does not have this huge platform on social media. Some of the things she does, some of y'all can see it. This is the truth. We who got a big platform or we talk small things, it, it can go wild. Even if it is not as big as the other people think that they do, but because we get big platform and we get the big fan base, when we talk, it go far. But Yomri does a lot of good things and when she talk about it, it doesn't reach as far as what we do can can reach. Yomri took the 15,000, the 15,000. She added another 5,000 there to make it 20,000 and she gave it to the people in Grand Bazaar to finish a school. Hello? They sell for 15000 because of political pressure and all that kind of thing. Yombly said, eh, I don't want the money. You take the money. But Yombly, are you sure? My people, let me ask you. Yeah, you tell me. You're sure that money, that money what Yombly left for them, say they must give it for a COVID fight. You're sure that money they will, they will use it for a COVID fight? Yombly, tell me. Are you sure that 15000 Yombly left for them and say you'll use it for the fight against COVID? They will not give that money. They will not give that money. So, you know, the politicians, the ones that try to do good, they come on a lot of pressure. A lot. You know, a 
And sometimes we can be a little too harsh and a little too unfair. Yeah. Y'all know that money, you only level up the board, the board, and you say, they will eat our money. So, when you look at what Yomli did with the first 15,000, adding 5,000 of our personal money to finish a school building, that's, that's, that's commendable. But the principle of them giving money directly to lawmakers is wrong. But individually, what Yomli did with the money is a good thing. Would anybody else say it's a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. Dylan took the five money, he gets onto the poor. The poor refuse it. Was he to keep to let them have their second money? What do you think they would do with the money? They would eat the damn money. So you know, I, I will I will end the video here. But y'all thank you. I gotta go. Bye-bye.